Welcome back, everyone. It is Sunday sit down time. Joining me tonight, the Columbia Tri Pr Tribune's Chris Kwasinski. How you doing tonight, Chris? We had a busy day of Mizzou athletics. Uh, I know you've been watching it all. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, awesome. Well, I want to start with the big news today. Obviously, Mizzou women's basketball. That was a heck of a win. You know, I'm curious. Ooh, a win like that, number 15, Florida. What do you think that means? That was obviously a must-win game for them. What do you think that means for NCAA tournament hopes? Yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up just because I think this win puts them in the tournament. I don't think there's any way you can look around it. This team obviously had a long range of struggles in February. It's struggled with uh, Tennessee, with Georgia, some of the top-ranked teams in the SEC. But to, to rally back, figure it out, and not only beat Florida in Gainesville, but to do it without Asia Blackwell and some key reserves, this really shows that this team plays well with its back against the wall. And that's the kind of thing that you're looking for in a tournament team. And I think with this win tonight, not only with Haley Frank being a rock star, but with like Jayla Kelly stepping up too as a, as a key reserve and Ladeja Williams coming back being that key post player, they're a tournament team, no doubt. Well, I've seen some predictions, you know, in the SEC tournament. I've seen one prediction of maybe possibly facing Kentucky. How, how important is this SEC tournament run for Robin Pinchin's group? Yeah, I think it's important just to solidify it. Obviously, you can't go into that tournament and, and lose by like, by 20, like they've had some SEC teams in the past, but I, I think putting on a good showing, I think putting on uh, a game where you're competitive, win or lose, is enough to be like, okay, like that's 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 impressive because, like Pidget, uh, like Coach Rod Robin Pinchett has said the other day, I think it was against uh, Kentucky, which was, this is a really deep league. This is a really deep year for the SEC, and you have Kentucky, you have uh, the likes of Florida, who's made a run to be a top 25 team. That's really impressive for a team with that's still as an interim coach technically and uh, to, to pit Mizzou up against the rest of those teams and to play well against the likes of LSU too where they were just a bucket away from sending it to I believe a double overtime and maybe winning it there. Uh, it, it's important to look great against another tournament team but you just can't lose by 20 again and I, I think they're still in but if you want a better seed, if you want better seeding, you don't want to be one of the last four in. I think putting on a good showing there means that they're going to be a top I'd say 10-9 seed playing another uh, automatic qualifier, maybe another at-large team. Well, when you look at the players they were missing today, obviously Kaya Duro, Asia Blackwell, and Skyla Travis, what do you make of that situation? You know, how important do you feel like heading into tournament play to have a, a player like Asia Blackwell back in this thing? Yeah, it's important, especially if they play the likes of Kentucky again, because she wasn't there for that game last week. And uh, when you have a player like uh, Ryan Howard that's on Kentucky, that's an all SEC player, one of the best small forwards in the nation. You have to pit your best small forward and your one of your best players in the nation against her too. And uh, having her back would be huge. And I, I think what we heard today from uh, Coach P was that there's a strong possibility they'll be back. But she really put the onus on them. She said, "You know, it's we'll see in the coming days." So I really think it's up to them what happens uh, coming in and, and showing that you know we're we know that we're sorry for our actions and we were ready to move forward from it and she's done this before with, with asia blackwell too when she missed uh, the georgia game with a violation of team standards and uh she she's really willing to forgive her players and she loves them so she wants to see them back on the court and why would you not want asia blackwell against kentucky again especially in the sec tournament where you know you, you could make a run and you could really solidify yourself as a maybe not even just a nine or ten c but maybe, maybe even an eight c if you run all the way to the championship game well, moving to a team that, you know, has the shooting struggles, Mizzou men's basketball. I, where are we at, Chris? I mean, it's a five-game losing streak. Where's this team at right now? Uh, you know, it's just difficult to go anywhere with this team. And, and I don't mean that as something that's on them, that they're struggling as a whole, because you've seen some of the positives, some of the good plays they've been able to make on defense, especially last night against LSU. They went down by 10 points twice in the first half, but were able to rally and cut it within a couple possessions. And you saw, like, okay, that's – that's where they're able to hang their hat on. They're, they're, they're a gritty team. They know how to fight, but they just kind of lose that a little bit in the second half. And I think some of that kind of goes back to only having eight players. I know on Friday uh, when we asked uh, Kobe Brown and Javon Pickett, what's it like playing with only eight players? And what are the struggles that come with not having walk-ons to practice with in practice? And they say, no, it's, it's difficult to do anything without 10 players in the game of basketball. And I think that rings true to this back end, uh, back end of the season. And uh, it's just difficult. But, uh, you know, it just comes down to if they can get back uh, Anton uh, Brookshire and maybe Jordan Wilmore for the SEC tournament thing, get those guys back. They'll have 10 and they'll have key reserves and they can sub guys out and they're not going to be gassed in the fourth, uh, excuse me, in the uh, thinking of women's basketball in the fourth quarter, in the second half uh, when they uh, start 
getting pressed and they start running a lot and they've been playing for those 40 minutes. So I, I think that's where it comes down to is just really just getting some reserves back. Well, when you look at a player like Javon Pickett, obviously he's led the team in scoring for, I think, a few games down the stretch here. How much, how important is his performance? And, you know, how, how frustrating do you feel like that must be? I, you know, obviously he's performing well. He's having good games. They're just, they're not getting there and getting those wins. Yeah, I think you can really start to see it. You know, the, I think it was uh, a couple days ago after uh, one of their losses, I can't remember which one it was, but he, we asked, you know, hey, what, what is this? What does this really mean? You know, you're really struggling. What do the struggles mean? How frustrating is it? And he's, he said, yo, we got a lot of pride in what we do. We have to be gritty and it's on the players. It's not on the coaches. And uh, I think with that, I mean, to me, that that was Javon really, really saying, I, I care about this team. And I don't think there's anyone that cares more about this team and this program than he is. I mean, uh, you think back to a guy that's been part of a, a CAA tournament team last year, who's kind of weathered the storm in, in his first three seasons just to be the guy this year and have his opportunity in the spotlight and he's taking full advantage of it but it's just it's just difficult when the things aren't lining up and things aren't going your way but I don't think there's any way you can doubt that there's anyone on this roster that cares more about Mizzou basketball than Javon Pickett and that's respectable and it's something that I think you gotta maybe take into account as he tries to make his decision and whether or not he comes back I mean obviously that's still up in the air and that's not something he probably is, is going to decide until he comes back I think he told us that on Friday uh, or when the season when the season ends, that is. But uh, there's no one else that cares as much as he does. Well, on to something a little bit more positive. Mizzou football has, you know, fielded a pretty good class this year. What are your uh, overall thoughts on the upcoming season? Eli Drinkwitz, I know, doesn't want to make too much of Luther Burden yet, but, you know, what are your overall thoughts? I, I mean, Luther already earned his number. I mean, that's impressive through the first couple spring practices for a guy to come out and, and to prove it to the coaches that, hey, like, I'm here to work and, I, and I'm willing to do the things that I need to do to make this team successful and to earn that number right away, I think was really impressive for a freshman. But I, I think it's really interesting. And I, and I think it's interesting as we kind of move into the first couple of practices to start to understand, you know, what position battles are going to be the most important. Obviously, you have defensive line, which is stacked with transfers, but you also have wide receiver, which has with the burden uh, also has a lot of returning players to it. So how are you going to figure out those two positions? Who starts? Who gets playing time? And uh, but obviously, it ultimately comes down to quarterback uh, between Tyler Macon and Brady Cook. You know, where where do you go with those two guys? Who who earns that start? And I think it just comes down to fall camp. I know he said it's, it's not going to be solved in uh, the spring, but uh, it really, whoever comes out, I think we'll have a leg up going into fall. But honestly, it also kind of depends on who else comes in. Maybe there's some transfers that come in in the coming months. There's always a transfer portal aspect to it. And, uh, months between spring and fall football. And it's exciting. It's exciting to get a first glance at these positions and the new look that this team has with the really great recruiting class, like you just mentioned. Well, Chris, I appreciate you joining me tonight. There's a lot of questions for Mizzou athletics as a whole coming up in the future. I know you'll be following it with the Columbia Tribune. Thanks. We'll have uh, more coming up right after the break.